My guest is Joran Pelleg. He's a professor at George Washington University. Welcome to the show, Joran. Thank you. Now, you're an expert on culture, and I want to talk about the military, and particularly the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, as they're portrayed in movies, because you've written about that, and uh, there's been a spate of movies lately. Uh, pick one, one of your favorites, Beaufort Castle or Waltzing with Bishop, whichever you want. I think Beaufort probably would be uh, my favorite in this respect. Why? It's uh, such a confining, claustrophobic <laughs> I think it's the interesting thing about it is what it says about Israeli culture at this particular moment, and especially the interesting thing for me is the fact that the film was first uh, published as a novel and then was made into a film. And there are great differences between the two, which I think are very interesting about what's happening to well, Israel. Well, tell me. I never read the novel, so... <laughs> yeah, the novel was, in fact, extremely um, popular in Israel. sold 130,000 copies. In Israel? Which, which in Israel is phenomenal. No, that it's, is phenomenal. Right. It became a cult uh, book that very quickly then um, was made into a movie, a very successful movie. And the very interesting thing about it is that the novel is one kind of a work of art, and the film is a completely different kind of work of art. And they both say two very different things about Israeli culture. Well, let's start with the book. Uh, well, tell the me book, about the book, because I Yeah, well, the book, the, 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 the film is very faithful to the... Um, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the film is very faithful to the novel. However, somehow the uh, change of angle is what changes the uh, message of uh, both. In the novel, the novel is a very patriotic work of art that uh, props up the IDF and talks about uh, patriotism. It serves up patriotism to, to the modern age, in the modern age. In and what sense? In the sense on that, that uh, it pretends not to be patriotic. It simulates irony, whereas in fact it is very patriotic and not ironic at all. But it simulates the, 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 the when you read it, you think you're reading um, a self-doubting, uh, an ironic text, which is not Well, we the should, case. for a lot of the audience won't have seen the film or read the book, certainly. Um, describe briefly the situation there, soldiers sitting in on the border, well, the film takes place on the eve of Israel's withdrawal from Lebanon in, the, the, in 2000, after 18 years of occupation. And uh, the soldiers that man the Bufor, which is a uh, medieval castle built by the Crusaders, um, it's a very uh, prominent uh, part of the mountain region of the south of Lebanon, and it overlooks the entire region, and it's extremely uh, difficult, it was extremely difficult to have taken militarily. And um, it is uh, therefore symbolizes Israel's uh, holding of, I mean, holding it's the last redoubt of the country in the south of Lebanon, and it's the last place that will be evacuated during the evacuation in 2000. And, and the, it's just they're both they're waiting there for the evacuation. Exactly. During this exactly. Film at least. And so the soldiers in, in in the so the book tells the story of this group of young people who are there for the last few days of their military uh, uh, tenure or uh, tour of, uh, of, a tour of duty, and they are very uh, attached to the place and attached to the roles in the military, and to, for them, coming down from the mountain represents defeat, represents um, all these negative things that have been said about the Israeli army throughout the occupation by a lot of uh, protest movements within Israel. That's in the novel. That's in the novel. Uh, I didn't get that, quite that sense in, well, the, and, in the and film. Exactly, absolutely. I, I didn't get that sense at yes. all. I mean, the sense of the film is, I, at least for me, I don't know for anybody else, but A, it's the warren of tunnels are overwhelming. They're, they're going down the tunnel and they're trapped. It's like they're being in a trap. Also, the, there was a tension in the movie that something was going to happen just before they got away, because the normal Hollywood norms would say that. Now, that isn't what happens, but that's the sense you get. So it has this suspense factor. Were they in the novel? Yes, very much so. But you were talking about the, the tunnels and the sense yeah. you get about them from the film. And it's an interesting point, because in the book, the tunnels, because it's so dangerous outside, the tunnels for the soldiers represent a warm bosom and a protective, a protective uh, womb, almost. 
where they uh, uh, get together with their friends and they can literally and figuratively be together. And in the novel you get a really a sense of community that they have there. I see. And the movie does exactly the opposite. Opposite, exactly yes. the opposite. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, very I'm interesting. Very, I'm really surprised actually. Is this generally perceived or is this your insight into it? Or Well, it's interesting because yeah. I talked to the director uh, about that and I wrote, uh, I wrote something about it and I sent it to him and he said, you know, I was waiting for somebody to say this. I didn't want to say this myself, but that was my purpose in interpreting the book. This was my interpretation. I'm very glad you, uh, you caught on to it because this is really what I wanted to say. No one has said this before and I'm really glad uh, you, you, uh, you showed me this. Well, what does that say, both perceptions using the same plot and the same characters totally opposite perceptions of the same thing say about the IDF? I think it really represents two um, contemporary uh, um, senses within the culture with respect to the IDF, its role, its history, and even for its future. I think there's a very substantial faction within the culture that still holds on to old um, ideas about patriotism and the army representing these sort of um, good old Zionistic uh, goals and ideals, and there are those uh, who uh, feel very differently about the IDF and what it, ha it has come to represent in the last at least two decades, and that is expressed very strongly in the film. I think both sentiments are very um, genuine sentiments that coexist within the Israeli body culture. Right and, now. and it seems to me, if I think of Waltzing with Bashir and other films I've seen, film tends to take the latter gener more generally, the very critical or skeptical, I don't know what you would call it, view of, the, of army service. Yes, it's true. Uh, I think it also has to do with the uh, respective roles of these two um, art forms in contemporary Israeli culture. I think that uh, whereas up to I think about 20, 15 years ago, literature held center stage as um, being uh, at the forefront of uh, cultural innovation and expression, I think it has been usurped, that role has been usurped by film and films now, I, I believe, represent much more cutting edge, contemporary and um, newer, uh, the newer uh, uh, cultural front. And in this respect, I would tend to say that because of that, the film represents, um, is more innovative in its approach uh, and it's uh, more sensitive to what's happening contemporarily in the culture as opposed to books, for example. Well, I know that it echoes with me because I was talking to my grandson who's sitting on the Syrian border with the idea. And he's describing his life as he's sitting there. You know, he's not supposed to have a cell phone for what's yeah. up. Uh, and I get, I get the sense that, you know, it's, their activities are routine and they're repetitive. And I asked him, what, not, what are you reading? You used to read Homer and all that. No, no, we just watch films. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it tells, tells us something. Yes, uh, well, we're, we're becoming a much more visual culture. I don't think it's just uh, in Israel. I think it's all over the world, certainly not just even the, the Western world. It's all over the world. Uh, you know, books really have been, and, 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 and um, book critics have been sort of uh, prophets of the uh, culture, and it's much more directors and films, and this is really what we focus on culturally, I think. Yeah, we're not living far from McLuhan Center, you see, and McLuhan had a big right. sense of the different right. media, give you a different message, yeah. and you get a different message, you have a different culture, and you have then a different per picture of the institutions that are core of that culture. Last question, what's the significance would you read for Israel uh, of this new representation of the IDF? It seems threatening in a way. Well, I think it really is a, uh, what we academics call a Kulturkampf, sort of an inner cultural wars that are raging within the culture. This is just one aspect of it, and I think one of the most vivid and um, vibrant um, uh, aspect of it, and I don't know what, I think history has decided which direction the culture is going to go, but I don't think the culture has caught on to that or understands that. In, and it may, may also be my personal take on this, but I think that uh, uh, we, we, we are 
proceeding towards the direction of what the film is depicting with respect to the IDF as opposed to the book, which seems to me to be fighting a battle which has, which has for the most part, been lost. Well, we'll see what that's very, you know, prophetic in a way. Anyway, thank you very much for coming on the show. I really enjoyed your insights, and I must get a copy of the book. Thank you very much for having me.